God began to give me this word. I saw in a vision. I saw a woman lying. I saw this woman in a desert. And I saw this woman in an isolated place. There was no hope left for her. And the Lord said, that's where many in my church are. Hallelujah. God is coming to pick you up, to lift you up, to carry you. Oh, hallelujah. I was down. I was forsaken. But now I'm coming up. I want the glory. I want the fullness of who He is. I don't need security in this world. I need to lean on Him. I am my beloved's and He is mine. Exciting time to be alive. An exciting time. It's an awesome time. It's the best time in the world to be alive. To serve Jesus. Amen. Upon this rock I will build my church. The word of the Lord said, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against her. You are privileged to be part of a, an army that God is raising up in this generation. What a generation to be alive. A, a, a resistance, a front that God is raising up to push back the plans of the enemy, the plans of darkness. Come on, when he said, when the enemy comes in like a flood, I'm raising up a standard. That's prayer. That's why the, this whole year the Lord has had us in prayer and fasting. I'm glad I was, I was brought up in prayer and fasting. I was under a man of God for 12 years and I knew most of my life that would pray many, many hours. Many, many hours. Many, many hours. The whole night through, we prayed for four years together, all night, praise God. And in this house, it'll be a house of prayer. Hallelujah. I know his dad, who started one of the strongest, uh, biggest Pentecostal moves in South Africa, was a man of prayer. Hallelujah. We're going to get his testimony, my spiritual father's father. He was a man of prayer, birthed one of the biggest moves of God through South Africa, through much persecution with the religious order. Glory to God. Glory to God. We're a house of prayer. Not information, but separation. Hallelujah. Not ice, yes, isolation when God wants there to be isolation. But we're moving into glory, folks. And it's nothing we can manufacture. I know there's a lot of pressure on many of you. But I know it's the birthing. Isn't it exciting? God is birthing. Isn't it exciting? God is birthing. Hallelujah. God is birthing great things in this hour. It's the most exciting time to be alive. It's the most exciting time to serve God. I'm telling you. Come on, let's give God a big clap of praise. It's the most exciting time to be called and to be chosen to reveal His glory. I'm excited about it. Amen. Well, you guys can take your seat. I want to get in the Word, and we're going to just see where we go from there. Uh, I want to get in tonight to, um, to the Word of God, and, and we'll just see where we go. I want to go to Song of Songs. If you would put up Song of Songs tonight, Song of Songs, chapter 8, Song of Songs, chapter 8. Uh, this is the word as I was praying. In fact, the last year, the Lord has been giving me the scripture. And uh, the, the last year, the Lord has been giving me the scripture. And I believe it's for, we have shifted now. You know, we, the original, uh, you know, scale or year was, or the, the scriptural year, uh, under, uh, if we understand that biblically is, is now in the new year, uh, as far as on the Jewish new year. But at the end of the day, I believe prophetically we seek God. At the end of the day, we are not bound by times and seasons. We're bound by God because God is outside of time and space. But there are also God working in times and seasons of our lives. And there was a time for him to deliver them out of Egypt. Come on, how many know there's time? There's set times. That's what the prophetic is about. So Song of Songs 8.5 is, Who is this coming up from the wilderness? Leaning on her beloved, beneath the apple tree I aroused, awakened you. There your mother was in labor with you. There she was in labor and gave you birth. I'm going to read it again. Who is this coming up from the wilderness, leaning on her beloved, 
Beneath the apple tree I aroused, awakened you. There your mother was in labor with you. There she was in labor and gave you birth. While I was in prayer on Tuesday morning, uh, God gave me a word, but it was connected to a vision. And I saw a woman, and I saw a woman lying on the ground like uh, her, her really had no more food. It's kind of like in a desert. I saw a desert, no more food, hot, the heat beating down on her. Basically, right at the end, barely just getting breath in her. And then I saw the Lord begin to send his messengers like the angels, just sent out and began to refresh and begin to carry this woman up out of this desert and into a place that looked like a city, but it was above. And then the Lord said to me, he said, this is what I'm about to do for my people. Isn't God good? And so I began to be encouraged because I sought out the word and I remembered what he gave me in Song of Solomon 8.5. Amen. Let us just pray. Father, I thank you for this word that you've given for this time, for this season, for this hour, for clarity, for understanding, for power, for anointing, for deliverance, for the prophetic accuracy, for the apostolic sent accuracy, and the apostolic raising up and establishing. For Lord, you sent into the body first, which is Lord, the proton and the ark of what you're doing, that you're doing a beginning. It's a new beginning season of what you're raising up in the body of Christ, and you're raising up the order of things. And Lord, that there's a set order now in this city and in this nation, that you're raising up, Father God, that which has been in the desert, that which has been in a tough place, that which has been in a hard place, that which has been in an endangered place, that you're bringing in, you're assembling your people together in Jesus' name. Amen. So while I was in prayer again, and God, that was on Tuesday morning with all of us together, God began to give me this word. I saw in a vision. I saw a woman lying. I saw this woman in a desert. And I saw this woman in an isolated place. I saw her very dry. I saw her very thirsty. I saw her very hungry. I saw her very isolated and very lonely. I saw her very abandoned. I saw her, I saw her, there was no hope left for her. And the Lord said, that's where many in my church are. Many are in that place and many are longing and they're saying, God, we, we are at the end of the end of the end of the end. And then the Lord said to me, I'm coming for my people. Praise God. Glory. Hallelujah. I'm coming for my people. Come on, somebody. I'm coming for my church. I'm coming for my beloved. Hallelujah. I'm coming now. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, five, seven, seven, eight. Come on, in this season, in this year, there's a coming. Hallelujah. There is a coming forth. There is an arriving place. There's a destination place. Come on. There's a joining together. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. There is a stirring up. Hallelujah. God is coming to pick you up, to lift you up. To carry you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know if I'm preaching to anybody right now, but I'm preaching to myself. I'm preaching under the atmosphere. If there's anyone listening tonight over the airwaves, God is speaking under thee. Hallelujah. This is a year. Well, in the year 5778, we're just going to go on it because I, I mean, I just believe it's interesting, the times and the seasons, but it's interesting because it connects that every first Hebrew letter of Song of Solomon 8.5, and that's when it hit me. I'm like, whoa, thank you, Lord. It hit me that every first Hebrew letter numerically adds up to 5778 of Song of Solomon 8.5. Oh, Every Hebrew letter of Song of Solomon 8.5 adds up, come on somebody, to Song of Solomon, hallelujah, 8.5, come on, 5.7.7, seven, seven. getting all confused with the numbers, 5.7.7.7, seven, 5.7.7.8 seven, 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 adds up to the scripture of what God is speaking to us, what God is speaking to those, and it's not everybody. But it's you. If you want to take it, take it. It's to his beloved. Who is this coming up from the wilderness? I was down. 
I was forsaken, but now I'm coming up. There's a rising. Oh, there's a favor. There's a rising. There's a lifting of the head. There's a lifting of the head. There's a glory. Hallelujah. Who is this coming? Who's coming? I see her coming. Oh, I see the church coming. I see God's people coming. The apple tree brings fruit. Oh, glory. Coming. You know what, you know what, 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 what is amazing about the apple tree? The apple tree is interesting in that it goes for fruit before it goes for leaves. I don't know if you know in the Bible. In the Bible, you begin to see Adam and Eve, when they lost the glory, they ran for the leaves. When they lost the glory, they ran for the leaves. But the apple tree is not running for the leaves. You know what the leaves are? Information. They want to cover themselves with knowledge. A lot of folks want knowledge today, but I want the glory. I want the fullness of who he is. I don't need security in this world. I don't need the protection of this world. I don't need the covering of this world. I need to lean on him. I am my beloved's and he is mine. Oh, I am my beloved's and he is mine. And his banner over me is love. His banner over me is love. And he sees me in my nakedness. And he sees me in my shame. And he sees me where I'm forsaken. He sees me in my hurt. Most folks today want protection. Most folks today want, want, most folks, guys, they've lost the, the, the broadcast. You, I don't know what's going on. I just get it now. Most folks want comfort. Most folks follow Jesus for the bread. Most folks follow Jesus for the protection. But I see this tree. It was not worried about the bread, was not worried about the protection, it was not worried about how much money, was not worried about the knowledge, was not worried about any of that. What it was concerned about was, I got to get some apples on this tree. I got to step out on the water by faith. I got to step out. It's, it may not be my time. I may be abandoned in a place, but there's got to be some apples on this tree. Come on, somebody. I will hasten my word to perform it. And I will quicken it, says the Lord. I will bring it to pass. I will cause a fruition. Oh, hallelujah. I will cause it to come to pass outside of normal conditions. Outside of what you see in the natural. Outside of your natural expectations, I shall bring you forth. I shall bring you forth in this testing time. I shall bring you forth through the pressure. I shall bring you forth while your emotions are being dealt with. I shall bring you forth while you're experiencing all these hurts and wounds. I shall bring you forth and I shall bring you into multiple glorious levels of breakthrough. I shall bring you forth and you shall move into your promised land. I shall bring you forth and you shall step into that new season. Glory, hallelujah. Come on, South Africa. Come on, people of God. Come on, church. Hallelujah. It's a new day. It's a glorious day. Hey! And the Bible said something in 1 Peter. It said that they're fiery trials. Fiery trials. We all go through fiery trials, but I would not complain in the fiery trials. There's gold in every trial. There's treasure in every situation. And you've got to find the good in the bad. You've got to find the glory in the pressure. You gotta find the glory and say, God, what is it that I've got to get out of this thing? Because the devil is not gonna get any glory out of my life. God, you're gonna get all the glory. You're gonna get all the honor. And I see a generation rising. I see a supernatural uprising. I see, I see an abandoned people that have been in isolation that have said, I'm gonna choose Jesus above it all. That song that they sang, give me Jesus. Frank sang, praise God for that song. It's so right for now. Give me Jesus. Betrayals. Give me Jesus when I'm abandoned. Give me Jesus through these attacks. Give me Jesus when I'm alone. Give me Jesus when I'm experiencing warfare in my mind. Give me Jesus while I'm going through all this rejection. Give me Jesus because I'm seeking him. 
in my desert. I'm seeking him in my desert. I'm seeking him in my place. I'm seeking him because I want to be near to him. I'm seeking him. This is what God is saying. Five, seven, seven, eight adds up to that, to that song Solomon eight, five. I'm, I'm seeking his favor. I'm calling and praising him. I'm worshiping the beauty of his holiness. I am aroused within me. Oh, to love on him. There's a perfume of glory that is going. There's an essence that I'm raising up into his presence of praise and love in this season and in this time. Oh, hallelujah. And these are bringing forth to those that in their pain have turned it around and said, God, you use it for your glory. Because when you've done all to stand and you stood and you stood with Jesus and you stood with his word and you stood in obedience and you stood in the precious and you've refused the flesh and you've refused carnality and you've chosen God, God releases. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God releases fruitfulness. God releases favor. God releases golden apples. Mm -hmm. Golden apples are supernatural words of life. The apples are the words of God. In the Garden of Eden, they say they took an apple. It was not an apple. But we know that's because of what the Latin word says anyway. The Latin word got confused with the English word, and the Latin word messed it all up. But we know that was not an apple. But we know it was creative power because we know the Bible said that the angel shut the door to the Garden of Eden because it's a dimension and a place and a realm that God would not allow them back into. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. But God said, I'm a birth in this hour. Hallelujah. Apples. What are apples? Apples are golden words. Revelations, understandings, treasures, precious treasures, precious treasures. You abandon the leaves of protection. You abandon the leaves of protection, that which kept you safe. You abandoned the place as in the garden. You're not hungry for the leaves of protection. You said, Lord, I don't mind. Let the leaves come later. Hallelujah. I don't know if I'm speaking to anybody. What the word of the Lord said, the just shall live by faith. You said, God, I'm not waiting. I'm not waiting. I'm not waiting for everything to be right. I'm following. I'm hungry. I want you. Come down. The earth needs you. The world needs you. Hallelujah. This city needs you. The world is in a mess. I'm crossing over. I'm stepping into that next place. I'm going into a new realm of experiencing in glory. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Before understanding, we must be willing to receive from God. Before really understanding, we've got to be willing to receive from God. Before knowing fully what it is. Before we know what it is, we step into what it is. In other words, God says, be obedient. I believe this is the generation that said, Lord, I I, I had all these conditions, but I'm laying them down. I took a risk on love. I took a risk in obedience. I took a risk and the world said, I'm crazy. My friend said, I'm crazy. Come on. I love the story of Ruth and Orpah and how she followed and 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 she followed. And And God chose a woman. Hallelujah. And he gave her favor. Come on. This is what the Lord is saying. Those who took risks, risks to lose it all, risks to lose it all for his glory. God's looking down on you and he's going to bring favor. Oh, favor. Somebody say favor. See, there's a favor that's coming, but it's a favor on those that have stepped 
into that place of obedience. You know, God is somebody's miracles waiting on the other side of your obedience, but that obedience releases favor, blessings, and miracles and supernatural. But it's those that have stepped not only out of Egypt, but they've stepped and they've allowed the desert to get the flesh out of them. For there's a crown coming, and it's a glorious crown. It's a crown to those that have laid the weights and the sins and the things that have held them back. But it's a receiving before receiving. You receive it before you receive it. Are you with me today? Today we have a lot of folks that are more about self-preservation and we've gone, the gospel has kind of been downgraded to about me, myself, and I, and most of the books that sell very well about me, myself, and I, and, uh, but God is raising up a people that no matter how, how much pressure, how much testing, how difficult it is, they're embracing the cross of Jesus Christ because the cross will bring an elevation. The cross will bring an elevation Staying in the love of Jesus will bring an elevation. Amen? 1 Peter 4, 3 said it this way. Instead, because you are participating in the sufferings, rejoice. Be glad. Because there's a glory coming. The Bible said there's a fire. The trial by fire. Hallelujah. 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 If you're going to really be an apostolic saint church that God's raising up in this generation, the fires are going to increase. So is the glory. I don't see the glory coming to any other kind of church. The glory is revealed to those that suffer. If you suffer with me, you will reign with me and there will be a glory revealed unto thee. And I'm not saying you find and say, Lord, bring on the suffering, bring on the pain. But there's a war going on. And there's a pressure because God has called and aside his church, his saints, to be those that will birth. And I believe we're in a season of birthing. God is busy birthing. There's tremendous pressure from multiple sides. And there's a lot of war in the minds and the souls of people right now. The spirit of confusion is rampant. But in the midst of it all, there are people. With the light of God's glory. I am my beloved's in the fire. I'm in the spirit. I'm in worship. I'm in praise. My mind is on him. My mind is on him day and night. My mind is not on my provision. My mind is not on my needs. My mind is on him. My mind is declaring, my soul is declaring prophetic destiny. Oh, hallelujah. My mind, my soul, my heart is declaring prophetic destiny. Come on, apples. I'm breaking into the apples and left, come on, from the mm, mm, just popping out. Apples. Apples are growing on the tree. Words, prophetic words. Miracles, apples are popping on the tree. Hallelujah. Words are coming out of this place. I've stepped into that place of obedience. I am my beloved's and he is mine. And his manner over me is love. Come on underneath the apple tree. And it's there, hallelujah, with the words. You don't feel it? You don't feel it, but you step into it. It's there under the apple tree. You don't feel it. Hallelujah. But you don't go by what your feelings say. You just say what God said. God said it. He's going to do it. I don't know if anybody's getting what I'm saying. It's prophetic, but it is. You don't feel it, but you know it. You declare it. And poo. Words. Poo. Miracle words. Poo. Apples just come. Hallelujah. In the desert, I am my beloved's. And he is mine. And I'm getting underneath the apple tree. And words. You are favored of the Lord. You are loved of me. And and you say, God, I love you. And 
God, you're worthy. And, and I just want to be with you. Whew, I can smell your presence. Mm, I can feel your presence. I feel you over me. I feel you near me. Oh, Lord, it's so good to be next to you. Hallelujah. And, and there's intimacy. Come on, the church is growing into intimacy. I'm getting under the apple tree. I'm getting under the tree where the words just flow. Woohoo! Words are flying. You see, see, you don't feel it in the beginning, but you step out in the desert place. And suddenly, out of my spirit, a river begins to flow. Hallelujah. Out of my spirit, a river begins to flow. Words. Mm, I can feel you. Hallelujah. I'm in a desert. You know, it's in the bad places. It's in the bad places that worship thrives. Worship is not worship in a good place. Paul and Silas were in a bad place. Real worship is not just, you know, these guys, good musicians and everything, jamming and having a good time. But, but real worship is when nobody hears you. When God sees the hell you're going through. Knows the pain and the suffering and the difficulties and the abandonment and the struggles. But in that place, you're like, come on, bring it on, Lord. Come on, I want you. Come on, I'm hungry for you. I'm in a dry and thirsty land. I need your word. I'm in a testing. I'm in a pressure. I'm, I'm, in, a, I'm, in, a, I'm in a difficult place, but I cannot deal with these emotions. I cannot deal with these thoughts. I cannot deal with the warfare. I, I cannot deal with what's going on. I, and, and I'm going through a test, and I, and I see a promised land, and you, and you shift around, and you say, Yes, Lord, I feel all that, but I am my beloved's. Come on, 5778. Seven, and he is a mine. Ha ha. Oh ho ho. Oh ho ho. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am my beloved's and he is mine. 1 Peter 4 12 said, Don't be surprised at the fiery trials that you go through as if some strange thing were happening to you. It ain't strange, it's normal. Don't think it's strange because I'm using and I'm preparing each one of you for such a glory. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's, a, there's a manifestation of glory. There's a new glory. We arouse God and he arouses us. We arouse God. We talk about awakening, real awakening. Who he is in the earth. Who he is in our lives. His glory manifests. We awaken God. We arouse God. And he arouses us. We transition from trials and tribulations into the very courts of the beloved. Hallelujah. Somebody say new glory. There's a new glory. There's a new favor. There's a new power. There's promotion and there's a blessing. That God's going to bring as you embrace and you seek him in your desert place. And it's a, it's a season, and I'm just saying prophetically, where there's an intimacy that's going to manifest between the bride and the groom. There's an intimacy that shall come for those that get under the apple tree, that step into the place. With him. Who is this coming? Come on, I'm pouring my words. I love the story of Mary. She came to Jesus and all her perfume that was, that caused really a great offense in Judas' life. And he betrayed Jesus. If you really look at it, one of the reasons was due to that fact that he couldn't handle her spending a year's wages on a few moments of glory. I picture that. I picture a people that say, God, you know what? I'm so tired of just looking after myself. I want to pour everything I am on you. Man, here I am. This is all I am. <laughs> Let me pour it out. I don't care what everybody thinks of me. I'm putting it in you. 
I'm putting it in you. I'm putting it in you. And she poured her worship at the feet of Jesus. And I'm going to say something. That was the moment that heaven and earth began to connect, that connected. Heaven and earth began to connect. She was the earth. There was heaven. Heaven and earth began to connect. There was what we call an arouse, an awakening. Who is this coming from the wilderness? Mm. Who is this coming from the wilderness? I love what he said. It's not a palace. It's not a mansion. It's not a hotel. It's from a desert. Who is this coming from the desert? Oh, glory. John the Baptist came out the desert. Jesus came out the desert. Paul went through many deserts. Joshua led them out of the desert. God's taking us out of the desert. Oh, glory to God. Mm -hmm. I'm coming out of the desert. But who is this coming from the wilderness? Who is this coming from the wilderness, but from in the wilderness, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning on the word of God, leaning on the everlasting arms, coming out of that desert, coming out of that desert, coming out into a new season, aroused in love, aroused in worship. Oh, hallelujah. Leaning on her beloved. He's carrying you folks. You may not even know it, but he's been carrying you. You were weak lying there, but he came to pick you up. And he's carrying you out of that place. And he's lifting you through. Glory to God. Because he's favored you. He sees you. He knows you. He's going to raise you up. Give him praise and glory right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Who is this? 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 I am my beloved, and he is mine, and his banner over me is love. He sees me in my pain. He sees me bleeding. He sees me dying. He's carrying me on his arms. Hallelujah. Who is this? I think they really want to say, how is this? For this shouldn't be. He should have died in that place. You should have been left in that place. You shouldn't have recovered in that place. But I saw you in that place. I knew you in that place. I looked down on you in that place. And I recovered you in that place. And I'm bringing you out of that place. Come on. I'm bringing you out of that place. The Bible said in Joel, he said, be glad, you children of Zion, because I'm going to give you the rain. Folks, the rain is coming. The rain is coming. You know who gave birth? He said, there your mother was in labor with you. There she was in labor and gave you birth. Interestingly enough, this whole year, I'm talking about since last year, around this time, the Lord said to me, there's a birth and I don't care about what this star says and that star says because that's just at the end of the day, it's what God said. I don't think we need to study all the stars and, you know, yeah, they can confirm and maybe they won't confirm. Come on. Hallelujah. I have a greater understanding. We should have. I have the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth. I I, I mean, I can search it all out and have all the understanding, but I have the greatest understanding of all. And his name is Jesus. And I have the spirit of Jesus through the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. And he said that it is the mother. That's powerful. It is the mother. The mother is not just your your mother. The mother, and it's not the mother. It's the saints of God. It's the saints that have gone before us. It's the generals in faith that have gone before us. I tell you, every day I go forward, I think about the men and women of God. I think about the Esthers. I think about the Marys. I think about Jesus. I think about Paul. I think about John. I think about all the men of God that I've known in my life. And I say, Lord, if they paid a price, 
It keeps me going to stay on the narrow road, to stay on the course and not to give up and not to fall and fail. Even though the enemy would try to come in, the, ble- the, 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 the focus that I have and the remembrance that I have of the mothers. When he speaks about the mothers, he speaks about the saints. He speaks about those that have birthed. You know what Paul said? Paul was a mother. Paul said, I go through labor pains. He was a mother. Amen. <laughs> he was <laughs> spiritual fathers and mothers. But in that, God, he said, I go through labor pains so that Christ may be formed in you. The church, there's the fathers, the mother, and there's mothers. Are the saints that have given birth. They've gone before us. They've prepared us. They've prepared the way. They've prepared the way for this hour. For this year. For this season. Hallelujah. For the glory. The harvest of souls. For the supernatural purpose. There. Your mother bore you. Where did she bore? She, she gave birth to you in a desert. I love that. You see, <laughs> that's where the glory comes. Didn't, you weren't born in a palace. You were born in a difficult place. You were born in hardship. You were born in a trial by fire. You were born in a desert. You were born in rejection. You were born under the hard load of Pharaoh. But under the hard load of Pharaoh, more births took place. These righteous ones are the mothers. These are the saints that gave birth. These are the men and women of God that gave birth. These are the John the Baptists. These are the Elijahs. And I love that because John the Baptist came through the desert. Elijah prepared the way for the desert, and I see that we have many that don't want the desert. They don't understand where the glory is, and they don't know where the appearing shall be. Come on, somebody. Under extreme conditions, Jesus came. Under extreme conditions, Moses came. Under extreme conditions, Elijah and so forth. And Hebrews 11, I shared on that last week. Hebrews 11, we see the saints of God, which are are our role models that should encourage us. And if we compare ourselves to them, we have no excuse, folks. It is in the wilderness of affliction and persecution and isolation and loneliness, enduring great temptation... Wanting to give it all up. I don't know if I'm speaking to anybody. If this cup could pass from me, while the blood was pouring from Jesus' brow, I would rather, he he wanted to give it all up. And many times I've said, Lord, I'd rather give it up. But I see you. And I see the saints. I love you. And I must bring Forth. Somebody say, I must bring forth. All of this is about what God is birthing, the revival, the move of God, the move of the Spirit, the move of the Lord, where He's going to begin to handpick those that in this very difficult season have been allowing Him to press the olives and the oil has been coming. Somebody say, keep pushing. See, I want to say, keep pushing, keep pushing, don't give up. These are our mothers. These are the ones that gave prophetic purpose and direction and future. These are the mothers that birth. And we see in the Bible, we see in the Word, we see these, these arousals that take place. And that is, and if we want to call it, it's, it's a stirring. It's a stirring. It's a, it's an, a, a, it's, it's a, the Bible said, stir up the gift of God. One is from the heavens, and the other is from the earth. And there's a connecting that begins to take place, which brings a birth. Come on. 
Huge miracles. God's about to arouse huge miracles. Amazing events. Supernatural events. The Bible said, Bible said, greater shall come. We're in the season of greater, and it's got nothing on weather. And I'm going to say it again. It's got nothing to do with the planets. I don't care if they were 12 or not 12, or, you know, if, you know, I believe personally, I believe God allowed that to happen, even if it was or wasn't, because it's prophetically about what He's going to birth in this season. Whether it's now, or whether it's in a month, it's not about us being taken away. It's about us releasing the glory. There's a glory coming. There's an arousal of His glory. There's an arousal of His presence. There's an arousal of His power. There's an arousal of His, of who He is. There's a birthing of, of the image, if I can say it that way, of the manifested image of the Son of righteousness, the healing in His wings, in the pressure that is extreme. The great births, I, I think of, of the children of Israel that were in Egypt under hard labor. And in that hard labor, many births took place. If we want to birth things, don't go for the easy gospel. I'm going to say this, even in the world, we're beginning to see, I mean, there was, it's hard, there's, I mean, it's like three or four earthquakes in Mexico. The earthquakes in New Zealand last week. There were earthquakes in um, in one of the islands. I think it was the Fiji Islands. There are earthquakes. I mean, in multiple places. There's all these hurricanes. And you know what God's doing? I'm not saying it's God doing it, but God's using it. You know what? All these earthquakes, these these situations, it's to bring a return. It's like, yeah, you haven't been praying. You haven't been seeking my face. Let's shake that bowl a little bit. It's going to bring a return. Somebody said repentance. It's going to bring an awareness. It's going to bring a searching. It's going to, it's going to bring a, a desire to look for God to find Him. I mean, We've been fasting. We've been praying. The Lord just said it. And this is prior to any of this. But the Lord said this is a season to fast and to pray. And we ain't stopping. Because it's a birthing. Something has to birth. It's in the spirit. Something. There's, there's a connection. There's an arousal that's taking place. Maybe it hasn't started in you, but I believe it's going to start. It's starting. It's beginning. Amen. In South Africa, in Cape Town. Come on, Cape Town. Everybody talks about the fire. I saw it as a child. God showed it to me. But it's, it, it's not for me to do. It's not for any of us to do. It's for us to seek Him. Hallelujah. Birthing. Somebody said birthing. See, what it bring forth. There's a relationship that's going to bring great protection. And it's going to bring forth a fruitfulness. A fruitfulness. An arousal, a birthing. It's God for you. It's God in you. It's God upon you. And it's under his banner. And it's under his protection. And it's under his love. It's a birthing of great power, of great protection, of great might. The apples. The apples are the, are the prophetic words that are coming forth. The apples are falling. And they sweet words. Sweet words. You know, I said to our folks, I said, you know, I travel around the world. Many times I've been traveling for 25 years in ministry, was with my parents in ministry. Actually, longer than 25 years. Can you believe it? Pretty 27, 28 years. But I can tell you where we are right now, God doesn't want to release prophetic words. God wants us to seek his face. The soul was dead. He's calling us to a place of experiencing and loving Him. Revival. Somebody said revival. Revival. So he said, who is this coming? Who is this coming from the wilderness, leaning on her beloved? Beneath the apple tree, I aroused you, I awakened you. 
There your mother was in labor with you. There she was in labor and gave you birth. That which was in the desert. I'm going to say this prophetically right now. That which was in the desert has been born. That which was in the desert. Now, we, you, you got to get this. This is Joshua, Caleb, and all that generation. It connects to that. We haven't been in our promised land yet. That which was in the desert. Mm. That which was in the desert has been born. It's been carried out and it's been brought forth. And I'm leaning on, hallelujah, my beloved. Who is this still coming from the wilderness leaning on our beloved? I'm leaning on my beloved. I'm going to say it again. That which has been born in the desert has been, that, that which has come through the desert has been born. It has been brought, brought forth and God is about to raise up. This new generation. And this new generation is going to be a people of prayer. And there's a prayer movement that's going to go worldwide. It's going to be an apostolic sent people. Not just anybody. It's an apostolic sent people that are sent out. It's not just ordinary church. Because most churches today, it's pastors and this, that, and the other. But i got to tell you straight. The Bible said, firstly, God said in the order of things straight. He gave apostles, prophets, teachers. Bam. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, the rough things that are beginning to take place in the world, the the crisis, the hardships, the turmoil, is, is, is God is bringing a new generation out of the desert that are being born for such a time as this. Hmm. That being born out of difficult circumstances to face giants. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. (laughs) Amen. What is the numeric value of this word? Is a Hebrew word means pakot pakariti. And it just literally means that God has appeared to you. And God is aware of you. God knows you. And God's getting ready to take you out. Literally like when God saw Joseph in his prison, the word of the Lord tried and tested him, looked down on him in his bad place and said, because I'm going to give you some, what the Hebrew word is actually called ched, I'm going to give you supernatural favor. I'm going to give you supernatural grace in your bad place, in your hard place, in your desert place, my beloved is aware of the individual. He's aware of you. He will appear to you. You see, it's like when God said to Moses, God said to Moses, you need to be a father to the people. And the Bible said that God has appeared to you. He appeared to him, which literally means he favored him. God's appearing in his glory. Oh, hallelujah. I am aware of where you are. I am aware of what you're going through. I am aware and I'm in charge because all things, one of the words the Lord gave me for this new year was all things work together for the good. I'm aware and all things are getting ready to work out for your good. Somebody say it's working out. You see, because God sees you And God's about to elevate you. Amen. I'm about to elevate you. And what he's literally speaking about, and I think about that vision God took me. If you understand, you really understand the ramifications of what's really been spoken. God gave me that vision, and I saw this person in a very bad place. I believe it's prophetically for where many are. And he came and breathed life and lifted and brought this person into a glorious city. You see, the new Jerusalem, and I believe that's what it's virtually speaking about, is the bride. It's the time of the bride. It's the heart. 
The new Jerusalem is the heart. Come on, somebody. It's the heart of God. We're coming back to the heart. Amen. To a higher realm. To a higher level of understanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going from a place where the greatest women and men of God have reached. We're moving into that place. I don't know if you're hearing what, what the Lord said. We're moving into a place where the greatest men and women of God, but even greater. And I think it's amazing because every year, interestingly enough, as far as on the Hebrew calendar goes, they have different, uh, uh, they have different equations for the years. And what's interesting is this, this year goes into a triangular form of 107. And 107 uh, is, is interesting because if you ever see a zero, it means God's really involved. But I think the 107, the zero, if you take, you can take the zero out and you've got 17. So again, 17. And I think what's very interesting, 17, remember what God gave me that, that, that vision when I was in a lot of prayer and he showed me a time of such supernatural revelation coming. And he took me into a room, which is called Isaiah's room, which is the messianic promises of God. When I was taken into heaven, I saw Jesus, and I was taken into this room called Isaiah's room. As I went into this room, I heard the words Baruch, Baruch. I didn't know what Baruch meant, but it means blessed to be a blessing. I went in this room, and I heard the number 17. I thought, why am I hearing the number 17? So I went to look up 17. 17 goes into the number 153. Isn't that amazing? I'm just, I'm just adding that, connecting that to 5778, because 5778 goes into a triangular form of numbers, which works to 107, which works to 17. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Which connects to the number of the sons of God. Come on, somebody. God is going to have favor. I, you don't have to try and understand it all. I'm just telling you what it means. But I studied it out. How many know that Jeremiah sent Baruch? That's when I studied it out and I realized to buy a field for 17 shekels. Because he said, I'm going to seal it for a time. I want you to buy the land that whoever occupies the land will never have dominion of the land because I bought the land. You see, you see, there's a generation that's sealed. There's a generation that have been hidden by God. There's a generation that have been in exile in a desert place that God is raising up. Come on, it's not Jezebel and her children. You know, there's a false church called Jezebel. But it's, it's God's church, hallelujah, that are born out of fire. And, and, and it's where we are right now, like the spirit of Elijah being restored into the earth that God is bringing. And it's the 17, it's the 153, it's the mega, the mega souls that God is bringing in. Song of Solomon 8.5. Who is this coming? Are you all good? Who is this coming? I love the who. Who is this coming? Who is this coming? They, 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 they're, not gonna, they, they're not gonna know what's coming. Who is that coming? Where did they come from? No marketing, no social media. Who are they? Who, who are they? They're leading on the everlasting arms. <laughs> Who is this coming? It's those that are leaning on him, being carried by him. They're coming. They're coming. They've been through labor pains. They've been birthed in the desert, and they're coming out. And they've been opened. They say, God, arouse this love. Bring me back to my first love. I want to encounter you once again. I'm opening myself up to be impacted by your presence. Impacted from heaven. Impacted by your glory. Come on with your thunder and your light. Come on with your love. Come with your fragrance. Come with your beauty. Come with your breath. Come with your golden apples. Come with your words. Speak to me and I'll speak to you. Love me and I'll love you. Embrace me and I will embrace you. It's a people that have created an environment for fruitfulness. In a desert place, they said, it doesn't matter how bad it is where I am. I don't care. 
I'm going to create an environment for him to come and be with me. We're going to connect no matter how because God has to get this done. I need him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God creates in nothing. God anoints the faithful. And you know what I love about this? Are you all good? They didn't need leaves. You don't need the leaves. The leaves symbolically mean the knowledge. The problem today, people want the knowledge, but they don't want the source. They want the knowledge, but they don't want to take a risk to connect with the source. They want the protection. They want the covering, but they don't want to submit. They don't want to get under, and they don't want to lean. They want to be independent. They want to go on their own. Well, I can tell you now, they're never going to re-experience the words. Mm. They will never experience the glory. They will never experience His presence because they never created that environment where they abandoned themselves. See, when God's raising up as a generation that just said, Lord, I'm giving up everything to follow you. I don't care what I get out of this deal. It's about you. And it's about what you want to do through me. Amen. Arousing the words. Arousing the apples. Waking his essence. Waking his fragrance. Bringing in all that he is. His godliness. Waking his character and his attributes. His love, his joy. His peace, his long-suffering. It's the sons of God, people. The image of God in the earth. Waking him in the earth. Spirit and truth. Amen. Hallelujah. One of the things I've got much information. But it was a spiritual. Let me just say this. In the Garden of Eden was a spiritual act that birthed the sinful nature. But I believe those that are in the desert, it's a spiritual act that is birthing this generation that are coming out of the desert. Five, seven, seven, eight. One of the things I wanted about to say, eight, eight is above. It's above nature. It's above the natural order of things. It's supernatural. We're going into the supernatural. It's the place where you ascend to the mountain of the Lord. It's a place of favor. It's a place, literally, where God comes with his wind and he goes, I'm drawing you up. I'm lifting you up. Genesis 33, 5 said, And Jacob said, Nay, I pray thee, now have I found grace and favor in thy sight. I have found grace and I have found favor. Somebody said grace and favor. Somebody say grace and favor. Come on, just tell him right now. Say thank you, Lord. Come on, just talk to him. Just talk to him. Just talk to him. Just love on him. We just thank you, Lord, that this is an hour of grace and favor. We need it, Lord. We need it. Who is this coming? Who is this coming? I don't know them. I don't know them, but, but who is this coming? Who is this coming? Why did they get that breakthrough? Why did they get that healing? Why did they get that miracle? Well, they embraced you, found grace and favor. I pray thee. I pray thee, just talk to him. I found favor. I found favor. Lord, I thank you for the chain. I thank you for the favor. I thank you for the favor. I thank you for the favor. Hallelujah. The Bible said in Exodus 33, verse 12, he said, Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, bring up this people. But you yourself have not let me know whom you will send with me. Moreover, you have said, I have known you by name, and you have also found, and you have also found favor in my sight. Are you good? Some you say favor. See, God's eyes are on you. God's eyes are on you. God's eyes are on you. And he's looking at you. 
And he's about to elevate you. Like Joseph. From one day to the next, promotion came. Hallelujah. But you know who it's coming to? Those who've been chastised of the Lord. The word of the Lord said in Proverbs twenty thirty, Blows and wounds scrub away evil, and beatings purge the inmost beings. I'm going to read that again. Blows that wound cleanse away evil. Strokes make clean the inmost parts. The pain, the pressure has saved the soul and raised it up higher to an elevated place. So be glad, you children of Zion. And rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain moderately. And he will cause to come down the former and the latter rain in the first month. Come on, let us thank him for that. You will ascend. He said, arouse my love. I am my beloved and he is mine. You will ascend from where you have come. You will rise up above from where you The position you were. Sowing, sowing, praying, seeking, praising, loving, calling on God, seeking his face. And God has seen you. And he said, how long will you forget me forever? This is what David said. But God said, I'm going to give you favor. I'm going to give you favor like Noah came out of the ark. And he found the dove. He found new life. He found through the fights and through the wars. He found peace. And he ascended in the presence of God. He ascended into the heights of God. You know they say when Esther went into a room. They smelt her beauty. She literally. Her fragrance penetrated every sphere of that room. This is the favor God's pouring out on us. His presence and his glory. There's going to be such a fragrance to the church. Who is this that's come out of this desert? Leaning on the beloved. (laughs) He is my beloved. I love him. He loves me. He's protecting me. He's holding me. Hallelujah. He's shielding me. He's favoring me. And they look at you and they say, who is this? I'm holding on to my beloved. (laughs) I met him in the fire. I'm holding on to my beloved, and he's raising me higher for his glory and for his praise. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled with the Spirit of God. From exile to elevation. Many in long awaited, waiting long on the promises of God, looking to the word. But God said, You've found. Somebody say favor. Favor. Somebody look at somebody say favor. Look at somebody else and say you found grace. All right. That word, grace and favor, the first part of that word means creative power. God's power to create the world. It's the chai. My father in law, who was a, a religious Jewish man who found Jesus. And how he found Jesus, he was staying with his girlfriend, and he, you know, he, was, he had his house and this, that, and the other. And he, and he looked outside, and he saw a chai, which means life eternal in the sky. And he left everything that day, and he followed Jesus. He said, if you're real, chai means life. It's the life of Jesus. In the desert, in the tribulations, you've overcome. You've overcome, and you found wisdom. You know who wisdom is? Jesus. You found Jesus. Amen. I'm going to read it again. Who is this coming of from the wilderness? Oh, I love it. Who is this coming? Eight, eight, five, seven, seven, eight. Who is this coming up from the wilderness? Through the trial, through the tribulation, through the pain, through the hardship, through the suffering, through the rejection, through the disappointment and the hurts, leaning on her beloved. I love that story. That, that is a story. That is somebody's story right here tonight. 
leaning on her beloved beneath the apple tree. I have aroused and I have awakened you. There your mother was in labor with you. There she was in labor and gave you birth. This is the year where God is bringing forth mm. that which has been hidden in times past. That which has been hidden, that which has been sealed, shall be revealed. Come on, somebody. It's going to be so powerful. There's, there's no way anybody can describe it. But God has selected those that have said, I don't mind the isolation. I don't mind the persecution. I don't mind the rejection. I don't mind the pain. I don't mind people looking down on me. God, you're going to use it for your glory. And God privileged the mothers to bring forth the children. Come on, somebody. And now, hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's wisdom and there's favor, and there's a birth. There's a birth. Hallelujah. The world right now is in those birth pangs. The world right now is in pressure, but we're moving with the dove. Some say elevation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you all good? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some say rain. See, God's going to reign. God's going to bring restoration. There's revival. There's renewal. But there's also terror in the world. But there's people of God. Hallelujah. Crying out to the Lord. Supplicating before Him. That will be favored. And this is the year. I'm going to say it again. This is a season of ascension. It's a season of going up. I love that scripture because the Bible said she was in labor and she was in birth pangs in Revelation chapter 12. And the Bible said that which is born was. It's the same thing. Was caught up. Up. Where are we going? Into a place of vision. Into a place of visions and dreams. Into a place of glory. Into a place of intimacy. Into a place where we meet him. Mm -hmm. face to face, opening the windows of heaven, showering down blessings, overtaking your home, overtaking your family, open doors, open heavens. Hallelujah. Because it's a birthing of a changed people. Changed. Changed. Because they change because they become God's sanctuary. Lord, here I am in the wilderness, but I've got apples. I've become a sanctuary, and I've received your grace. I've received your favor. And I think again of Ruth standing there, minding her own business, just working it out all alone with nothing. And there comes Boaz, and he says, come on. I'm going to take you in. I'm going to take you in. You've been working it. You've been cleansing the word. The word has been purified. And you've gone from carnality to the supernatural maturity of Christ's likeness. And I'm going to use you. Come on. How much she was sorting to bring in that harvest. Hallelujah. Prayer. I believe the seeking season is a birthing season. I believe the seeking season is a preparation season of the bride that God is raising up. But I believe also, again, where the Bible said, like John, he said, I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful, and he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. This is where we are. We're going through the fire, but we're going to be baptized with fire in a glorious way. All right, there's much to say. All I want to say is I believe we're getting ready for the greatest harvest the world has ever seen. And the Lord just said to me, he said, you know, I was traveling so much. I used to travel over a hundred and something thousand miles a year. And the Lord said to me, you stop everything. You die to your ministry. And he said, you come here. And, he, and, and, and some days felt like jackhammering. But I can tell you something. God's going to birth in this hour. And he's got his people. 
And he's got those that have been through the fire. But somebody say favor. See, God's about to raise up a people like Ruth, who through obedience to his desires, cleaning in the fields, became the masters of the fields. The harvest has come. The fields are white. This is a, this is a season. Where God is moving us into a harvest. Hallelujah. And I was thinking of Sarah. Because I was thinking of godly women as types of the church. Because we see this here. And we see Sarah. And the Bible said about Sarah. Sarah obeyed Abraham. In Peter it says, Sarah obeyed Abraham and called him her Lord. Come on you, wonderful woman out there. There's something for Diane. I'm sure she'll appreciate it to you. And all the men said, Amen, you know. That'll preach. I, I can imagine some of the modern day uh, woman preachers preaching that today. Okay, I, I don't see a lot of laughs. I see some very serious faces at me. <laughs> but he, he said, you are her daughters. If you do what is right and you do not give way to fear. She called him Lord. These are the daughters of Sarah. God is raising up these godly, godly women in this hour. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say it's an appointment. But it's an appointment of the shield of David. God is raising up his messianic seed, his surrounding light. So it says, Sarah obeyed her husband, Abraham, and called him her master. You are her daughters when you do what is right without fear of what your husbands might do. When you do what is right. Amen. Some may say we're going to do what's right. So I see the church as doing what's right. The people of God are doing what's right in this hour. Haggai chapter 2, quickly, if you will just turn there quickly with me. I just want to read it for today. Haggai chapter 2. Glory to God. Praise God. Just put that up there. Haggai chapter 2, verse 18. And uh, it says in verse 18, said, Consider now from this day upwards, from the 4 and 20th, day of the ninth month, even from the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, consider it, is there seed in the barn, as yet the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive tree hath not brought forth from this day. Somebody say from this day, I will bless you. It speaks about how he blessed them. They went through difficulty. They went through, they went through hardships. But I just want to say, it's quite interesting. This is the 24th day on 5778. So let's just take it. I will favor you. I will bless you. Come on. Consider from this day upward, from the fourth and twentieth day of the ninth month, even from the, the day of that foundation of the Lord's temple was laid. Consider it. Is the seed yet in the barn? Yea. As yet the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive tree hath not brought forth from this day. Somebody say it's turning around. See, God's turning it around. You know, the curse is broken. And I get the word of the Lord came into Haggai in the fourth and twentieth day of the month, saying, Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth. This is where we are. There's shaking going on. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. I will shake the heaven and the earth, the heavens and the earth, and I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms, and I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathen. And I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them, and the horses and their riders shall come down, every one by the sword of his brother. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, I will take thee. Come on, lift up both your hands. Say, thank you, Lord. He said, I will take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Sheltiel, saith the Lord, and I will make thee as a signet, for I have chosen thee, says the Lord. There again is his favor. Come on, stand up right now. God's favor is upon thee. If I could have the guys up. Hello and everybody. Uh, God's favor is upon you. God's favor is upon you. I want to just pray. 
after this word went out. It was a word that I just had to pray through, and I believe that it'll bless you. But I want you to picture that which God showed me in the vision form. And that woman was there, and the Lord looked at her, and he began to favor her. I want you to see favor coming your way. And I'm talking about those that have been through the desert and said, Lord, I choose you above it all. I've stepped out in faith. And I want to just talk about even those that have sown seeds in faith, that have given in faith, given of themselves in faith. It may not look, you said, Lord, I've I've actually negated what I should have had by being obedient. I lost what I, in the natural what I should have had. God, I, I, wanted, I should have had leaves. But God said, I'm giving you apples. Amen. Come on, just say, thank you, Lord, for that word that was spoken to me. Like Joseph had favor. Like Benjamin had favor with Jacob. Like Joseph had favor with Pharaoh. Like Esther had favor with the king. Like Jesus had favor with God and man. Like Daniel had favor. Like Moses had favor in your sight. I thank you for favor in your sight suddenly that you're coming under me and you're visiting my household. That blessing is coming my way in this season. I am my beloved's and he is mine and his banner over me is love. And I'm leaning on you and I'm trusting you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God.